And we'll pick it up at verse 11, where Jesus tells this parable of the lost sheep. And so there are three kinds of people in this world. There are wolves, and there are sheep, and then there are sheepdogs, aren't there? <laughs> Three kinds of people in this world. Wolves, sheep, and sheepdogs. And so Jesus is going to remind us how he loves us as his sheep. And um, so we're looking at Matthew 18. Let's pick it up now. Verse 11 and stand out. Respect the word of God and just read down to verse 14. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray? Mm -hmm. Doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? Mm -hmm. And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so it is not the will of your father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. Amen. Amen. So hearkening back to when we read earlier in the chapter, when Jesus sent that little one in their midst mm -hmm. and said, you have to become like a little child if you're interested in being great in the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. And so really he hasn't let go of that yet. See, he's still dealing with those things. And even in likening us to sheep, and especially how much the shepherd, of course, will love those sheep and go after one if it were to go astray. Mm -hmm. And all the more, if somebody were to cause some little one to perish and go astray, God's mad at them. Because, yeah. see, that was just a little innocent child, and you may have destroyed their lives. And so much of that is going on. There's so many children being used in trafficking for wicked and satanic purposes today. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for Jesus' warning and what all Jesus is trying to teach us, tell us even about one another as, our, as being brothers and sisters in your church and in the Lord, that we be careful. Uh, that's why we believe in discipleship. That's why we like to sit down and train people in how to pray and read their Bible, mature them in the faith so that they can grow and mature and be a good witness for you in these terrible days we're living in. So help us, Lord, and in Jesus' name we ask it. And amen. amen. And so, number one, Jesus came to save the lost. Amen. Of course, Jesus considers these things in Luke chapter 15 where Jesus talks about uh, a lost sheep and he talks about a lost coin and he talks about a lost son amen yeah. and um, it's kind of neat how Luke puts these parables all together here he talks about the lost sheep in Luke 15 4 and then the lost silver in verse 8 and then he talks about the lost son, the prodigal son. And uh, it's left up to the reader to figure out exactly who the prodigal is. <laughs> At first, it seems like it's the younger son who wanted to just take his inheritance early and run off and spend it. But in the end, when the boy came to himself and repented and came home, uh, the father found out that the boy that never did leave home, his heart wasn't too much <laughs> right either. <laughs> and so let's take a look, a look at Luke 15, verse 4. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And so that's a part of church work too, you know. Part of church work is as a pastor, sometimes a visitor, a new person, or a babe in the Lord. 
uh, will want to dominate the pastor's time and shaking his hand and talking to him. And, and uh, if you've been a member very long, it's understood that you just go on home. You don't have to stand around and talk to the pastor. <laughs> Sometimes the pastor's attention is uh, more important to be spent on somebody that needs it right. than somebody who don't need it. That's the lesson I think Jesus is trying to help us get here. If you got 99 sheep, well, you know the 99 are okay. It's that one that went astray you got to concentrate on. <laughs> and it should be understood. There shouldn't be a single sheep jealous because <laughs> the paper right. is getting all the attention. Amen. And yet we've seen it happen. And it tells you a lot about a person uh, that thinks that, you know, they got to dominate. Uh, the pastor's attention all the time. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's understood. Now, a hundred sheep is not a lot of sheep, but it's a good handful of sheep. Yeah. Yes, so if a person's a small-time farmer, all the more the few sheep he's got, they mean a lot to him. Unlike the guy that's got thousands. Mm -hmm. Maybe he can suffer the loss of one because he's got thousands. But no, it's understood. And, 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 and so it's an interesting uh, point Jesus is making. And when he hath found it, verse 5, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. Amen. Look at Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17. Okay, when you get it, stand and read it for us. How's that? Zephaniah 317. Amen. What a beautiful verse. Because Zephaniah 317 is showing you that the Lord loves you. And when he comes after you and he puts you up on his shoulders and carries you back home, He's singing you a love song. Amen. Amen. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will, he will rest in his love. He will joy over you with singing. And so the Lord wants to sing. Amen. As he takes you back home. And when he cometh, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise, just like that, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. And so Jesus came to save the lost, didn't he? Yeah. Joy's mom had died, and we were going through those motions of talking to people, you know, at the nurse, I mean, not the nursing at the funeral home, mm -hmm. before the funeral. And, and uh, we had Brother Corky preaching. He preached at funeral, didn't he? Of all things, Brother Corky preached at funeral. And he was able to lead Rose, Mary's sister, to the Lord. And, of course, Rose was so happy that she'd finally found the Lord like Mary knew the Lord. And she asked us, you think Mary knows that I got saved here the night before the funeral? And I told her, I'm absolutely sure she knows you got saved. Because the Bible says that in heaven, that there's joy in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. And I'm sure them angels are beat, striking up the band again. And everybody's hollering and happy. And, somebody, and Mary turned around and said, well, what's everybody so happy about? And somebody said, your sister Rose just got saved. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because Jesus came to save the lost. And so we should do all we can to win people to Christ. Yeah. If he saved us for a purpose. Yeah. If we're supposed to follow in his steps, which is what Peter said to do, then amen, we need to be seeking the lost. Yeah. 
And when we know somebody is the chiefest of sinner all the more, go after them. Because mm -hmm. maybe they'd like to be saved. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus seeks every single one. Amen. Right. He's not content just to have a hundred. <laughs> If one were to walk away, he's going to be interested in going after. Him. Now, what this happened to us on an occasion. It was funny because my my mind always goes back. It wasn't his name. Wasn't that his yeah. name? Right. We were over on 37 Jerome Street at the Michigan Bible Church at that time, and I had a fellow that just walked down the street to go to church because he, you know, he, his apartment was just down the street. So he come down. Well, he really got into a Bible believing church, of course. You know, he didn't know how radical that was going to be. But he seemed to be very happy. He had found such a Bible-believing church where his pastor loved him. We told him the truth always. And he's a Vietnam vet. And at that time, back in the 80s, I, there was a lot of Vietnam vets in the area that we ministered to because they were definitely lost souls. And, and uh, they could tell we genuinely loved them and wanted to reach them for the truth of the Lord. And uh, old Ray, though, he got to where he, uh, one day I got the word that he was down at the Trapper's Bar. And I knew this wasn't right. Because Ray wasn't supposed to be down there. But, you know, one thing led to another. And somebody let me know that, hey, Ray's down there at the Trapper's Bar. Well, this verse hit me like a thunderbolt. I'm going after him. Because he's a lost sheep. He's gone astray. He's one of my sheep. He's gone astray. And this don't mean much for Monroe, but it meant a lot to little old Michigan Bible Church, 37 Jerome Street. Right. You know, not much bigger than we are now. So I didn't know a single thing I was going to do or say, but I knew I was going after him. So me and a couple of fellas went down there, and we went walking in. Well, the whole place knew we were there. I don't know how. It's sort of like, you know, gun smoke. Mm -hmm. Matt Dillon walks in the room. Everybody's room, rhubarb, 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 rhubarb. Next thing you know, everybody knows Matt Dillon just walked in the room. So I walk in the room, and I'm looking around, and I finally spot him. He's over here playing with somebody at the pool. And uh, so I go right next to that pool table, stand next to the wall where there's a little table like there. So, of course, the waitress comes running right over and asks me if I want something. And I said, yeah, I'll take a, I'll take a Coca-Cola. So she goes and gets me a cold can of Coke, you know, brings it to me. And so Ray's not spotted me yet. I've come through the whole room. Everybody knows I'm there but Ray. And he just thinks he's lining up a shot, you know. He's talking to whoever he's playing there. I don't know who it is. And uh, so I'm there. And a couple of the fellows are with me. And then finally, somebody leans over to him, whispers to him or something, and tells him, your pastor's standing right there. Don't you see Pastor Dan's in here? So he's like three sheets in the wind. You know, he's fixing to make this shot. And he looks at me and says, oh, hi, Pastor Dan. <laughs> totally caught him off guard. And I went right over to him, put my arm around him. I said, now, Ray... You know, that Bible says, because, you know, we teach the Bible in our church. We go by 1 Corinthians 5.5. 5. Mm -hmm. We turn such a one over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved. Amen. I said, now, Ray, am I going to have to turn you over to Satan for the destruction of your flesh that your spirit may be saved? Is that what I'm going to have to do? You know you've got no business in here. And he immediately started bawling like a baby. Oh, you're right, Pastor Dad. I'm sorry. I mean, it was so beautiful. Man, the Holy Ghost just hit him, buddy. And so we immediately walked out the door together. Yes. <laughs> I sure don't know what happened to Trapper's Bar. But I knew that I did my duty to go after my lost sheep that had gone astray, man. And I sure didn't have any regrets because it was what he needed at the time, and I was glad to do it at the time. And he straightened up for a long spell. So Jesus seeks every single one. I mean, the sheep wandered away. The sheep was sought by the shepherd. The sheep was sought in the mountains, the Bible says. Amen. Because, yes, he don't want to lose that sheep that's gone astray. He loves it. 
He wants to bring it home. Amen. Number three, we see the lost sheep. It's so funny how the Bible worded it there. That, and if so be he find it. See, Jesus may or may not rescue the lost one. Now, if he keeps going, he thinks he hears it, that little lost sheep bleeding there behind that big rock, and he steps around that rock. Now it's run off. Now it's behind the bush, and so the shepherd goes to the bush, and then he's not. Then he sees he's run away, and now he's hiding behind. Maybe the Lord will only travels so far if he keeps running away. The Bible warns you, you may, send, you may send away your day of grace. You may say, no thanks, Lord, no thanks, Lord, no thanks, Lord, to finally, he says, what did I hear you say? Okay, bye. There's the lost sheep. We found it. There's this skull. Something happened to him. Didn't turn out like we wanted it to. Amen. The Bible says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Mm-hmm. Call upon him while he's near. Mm-hmm. Today, if you hear his voice, the Bible says, mm-hmm. harden not your heart. Amen? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now look at John, chapter 10, where we, we're reminded again, Jesus spoke to us again about him being the good shepherd, amen, and how, of course, he's going to give his life for the sheep. Now, it's wonderful that the Bible says Jesus called himself the good shepherd, and it's very important you notice that the good shepherd did not send his mother to go get the sheep. Amen? Now, this is the teaching of a certain church down the road. This ain't what the Bible teaches. Amen? You can pray to Mary all day. You'll just split hell wide open because Mary can't save nobody. Even though a certain church has certain images of her on crosses and stuff. But it's all lies. Right. It ain't the mother of the shepherd that died for anybody. It's the shepherd who gave his life for the sheep. Amen. Amen. And so it's important you see that. Verily I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, mm-hmm. but climbeth up some other way. Mm-hmm. There's only one way. Jesus said, I am the way. And he's the door, and that's what he's going to say here. You try to get in another way, the same as a thief and a robber, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. See, many times in the sheep coat, like I've told you about how in, in Boaz's fields there's these big caves, many times two or three Shepherds with their flocks will all put them in the same cave, cave together. And so the shepherds, you know, will take turns and they'll visit one another and they'll eat and they'll have a campfire there. And then when they're done resting and doing whatever they got to do, then they'll call their sheep by name and they'll come and follow their shepherd's voice. Then that one will leave. And then after a while, then the other ones will come and they'll follow their shepherd and they'll leave until finally the one or two are left or and the one flock's left that maybe is remaining. So it's so beautiful what Jesus is saying because there's so much to understanding the ministry here and how we are and how we're related to him as our shepherd and how the thing is, do you know his voice? A stranger will they not follow, verse 5 says, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. And this parable spake Jesus unto them. But they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them, Again, verily I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep, and all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. Amen. Amen. So Jesus is the door. It's not Theodore. It's the door. Amen. Amen. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Again, see, he don't send his mother. 
But he that's an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf cometh, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he's an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I'm the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No man taketh it from me. But I lay it down of myself, and I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. Mm -hmm. This commandment have I received of my Father. Mm -hmm. And so it's just so beautiful that Jesus is the good shepherd, and he loves his sheep. Yeah. Jesus forgives and rejoices over that recovered one, as we said in Zephaniah. And he brings them back. Now, if a sheep keeps straying, keeps straying, keeps straying, Finally, a good shepherd will break his leg. Yep. The good shepherd will take that leg of that lamb and he'll break it. <laughs> oh my! That sheep hollers and then he binds it up. He puts a splint on it. He puts ointment on it. He anoints the Sheep's head with oil. <laughs> Amen. Seems like there's a psalm that says that somewhere. Amen. The 23rd psalm. Amen. Because he's a good shepherd. He takes good care of his sheep. And day after day, he's got to carry the sheep, lay it in some nice grass. She'll eat all around her. And then he's got to pick her up again, put her over here where there's some nice grass. And then she'll eat all around her. And so she becomes a real burden for the shepherd for a little while. He's constantly got to be at her beck and call. Then he'll take her and take her to the water and have her get a good draught of good cold water, you know. He leads me beside the still waters. Ain't that what it says in Psalms 23? Let's read it real quick. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over Surely goodness and mercy. There's the two sheep dogs mm -hmm. yep. following him everywhere he goes. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Mm -hmm. And so it's just so beautiful that if necessary, he will take that wayward lamb, break its leg, nourish it, feed it, minister until finally it heals up and pretty soon that sheep is of the mind. He can take the binding off one day. She can dance around with all the other sheep. Everything's beautiful. And she hasn't even noticed it. But now... When the shepherd's out with the sheep, guess who's at his heels? <laughs> guess <laughs> who is not wandering away anymore. Somehow she's got it through her little pea-picking skull that that shepherd loves her. And the stupidest thing she could do would be leave his presence. Because she has experienced his healing hand and his love so consistently that she don't even think of 
one time we're leaving that ship. Mm -hmm. But the wayward lamb at first, see, is full of her own ways. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man. The ends are are the ways of death. Right. Amen. <laughs> but this sheep gets a thinking, I don't need that shepherd. Who does he think he is? Mm -hmm. I watch some TV and I know some karate. Mm -hmm. I can take care of myself. Oh, this clover over here. Look at this. This is red clover over here. He keeps feeding us that old white clover, but I like this red clover. Mm -hmm. You know, pretty sure, pretty soon the sheep's all coming. The shepherd's calling him. You know, he's going to have him bed down for the night over here where he's got a little fenced-in area. But I'm not going to go with that shepherd. I can stay up all night if I want to. See, uh-oh. Somebody's in trouble. Somebody's thinking a little too highly of themselves. Right. Think soberly, the Bible says. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty soon that sheep's way off. It's because that red clover looked pretty good, but then once they saw the red clover, then pretty soon they seen a wildflower over here and none of them were. And boy, it tasted so good, best they ever tasted. <laughs> yeah. One thing leads to another and after another, and then all of a sudden, it's so quiet out here. There's no other sheep bleeding. There's no noise. There's no shepherd singing. Mm -hmm. right. And she looks around and it's starting to get dark. And, uh oh, where am I at? I don't know. Where's the shepherd? Where's the sheep? Uh oh, somebody's lost. Amen. Right. And so. They think they're all right. It's okay. They got a full stomach. They don't have nothing to worry about. Amen. Maybe they'll have to lay down and get a little dew on their wool if they spend the night out here by themselves. But then pretty soon, whoop, 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 whoop. there's an old wild dog or wolf or something, coyote, something. And she's hearing noises she ain't never heard before. And she's nervous. She's scared. Uh-oh. What's that? And then maybe just between her, is she's up on the mountain. You've seen pictures where the sh lamb's way up on the mountain, maybe on the cliff of the rock, amen. There's a big valley below, see. And maybe between the sun and, and her, all of a sudden that big shadow of that vulture or an eagle or something slides across her and she realizes, uh-oh, there's something in the air too, she <laughs> she. She better be worrying about. Mm -hmm. Of course, that buzzard looks down and says, mm, boy, it looks like we're going to have lamb chops for supper tonight. <laughs> mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, she gets scared. And she starts running pretty soon. Pretty soon, she falls over a little precipice or a cliff, and a branch catches her. She's ah! Ah! hollering, looking for some help. Ain't nobody hearing you over there, sweetheart. I love this artist's rendition here. See, it's noisy over here. We can't hear. Shepherd can't hear you. All that waterfall down in there. You can holler all you want, little black sheep boss. <laughs> Ain't nobody hearing you back in there. Here comes the predators. Here comes the eagle. Here comes that old chicken hawk. Here comes a wolf. Uh oh. But the shepherd. He says, let's see, 99. Where's 100? Somebody's gone. Lammy's gone. Lammy! Lammy! He's looking for the lost sheep. So he starts to look. Listen, uh, uh, last time I saw her over there by that rock, so he's trying to retrace her steps, trying to figure out where she went. Pretty soon, he don't have to look far. He can see that old buzzer coming in there. He can hear that whoo, 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 kicking closer and closer. So she, and then finally, once he gets near the roar of that stream, <laughs> probably hoarse by now, barely able to holler, but praise the Lord, hallelujah, amen. The good shepherd finds his wayward sheep. And he grabs a hold of her and picks her off. Oh, she's got burrs all over. She's cut. She's got pickers. She ain't too good a shape. She may not really be worth saving. <laughs> but
but he picks her up, puts her on his shoulders. Amen? Amen. And he skips along the hills, the Bible says in another place, and he's singing her a beautiful love song. And I hope she's got the message. But that's Jesus, my friend, yeah. going after the lost sheep. He don't want to lose a one. He wants all Israel to be saved, but will they all be? Nope. Some of them it's too late. <laughs> Some of them it's long too late. But whosoever will may come. The Bible says today, if you hear God's voice, harden not your heart. Let's stand up saying, I have decided I'm going to follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. No turning back. 454.